Um, I'm here today to talk about Generation Z, and I'm just starting with this video of a goldfish swimming aimlessly around in a black void. Does this goldfish remind anyone of Generation Z? How many people have employees or children or know someone under the age of 25? Anyone? Hands? Great, a lot of people. Can anyone tell me the similarities between this goldfish and those people that you know? Chris nailed it, of course. Attention span. A recent study found that the attention span of a goldfish is nine seconds, and that the attention span of the average Gen Z person is eight seconds. <laughs> By comparison, millennials, I'm a proud millennial here, have an attention span of 14 seconds. So, I'm Evan Thomas. I'm the head of social media at Naked. And for those of you that don't know, we're a vertical direct-to-consumer fashion brand born right here in Gothenburg. Uh, we were launched in 2016, and in just three years after launch, we're at 100 million euro in annual net revenue. We have 2.3 million followers across our social channels. And we are pioneers of influencer marketing. Uh, according to an independent third-party survey, Naked is the third most, fashion brand, uh, third most mentioned fashion brand in Europe and the first most men uh, mentioned fashion brand in Germany. That's our biggest market. Back here in Sweden, there are 1.3 million females between ages 13 and 34, our target customer group. 15% of them are following Naked on Instagram. So we have incredible reach. As I mentioned, Naked has incredible reach on social media, um, and we're communicating effectively with Gen Z. And I know what you're thinking. We just figured out how to market to millennials, and now you're telling us there's a new generation to consider. Well, yes, there is, and you really need to think about them because they are now the world's largest age cohort, and they're forever changing marketing and communications. So I think we're all familiar with the sort of generational breakdown. Uh, baby boomers born into the post-World War II prosperity of the Western world. Um, they were introduced to things like the television, and they communicate mainly by telephone. Generation X. Does anyone know gener this uh, figure from Generation X? I just Googled famous Swedish people, basically. Um, yeah, exactly, hockey player. Um, so they were introduced to the personal computer. Uh, they communicate by email. Millennials introduced to the mobile phone. Uh, communicate mainly by text message. And millennials were born roughly between 1980 and 1994, and Generation Z after that. And I say roughly because there is no standard accepted definition of this generational breakdown, because it's not just uh, birth years that define a generation. It's a group's common perception about how the world works. So the defining moment for the baby boomers might have been the JFK assassination, if you're American, or the hydrogen bomb, the Cold War, for Generation X, the fall of the Berlin Wall. Does anyone know the defining moment of the millennials? The, what is the event that separates millennials from Gen Z? Anyone? This was the defining moment. If you were too young to remember 9-11, or you were too young to understand and grasp the effect and implications this had on the entire world, then you're not a millennial, you're part of Gen Z. To Gen Z, 9-11 will only be something they hear about in textbooks or from their history teacher or something their parents tell them about. So what are the common characteristics that unite Generation Z? And this first one is, you know, it's pretty straightforward, fairly simple. They cannot remember the world before the internet or the mobile phone. Remember, this is the generation that thinks the app, uh, the icon for the phone app looks weird because they've never seen or used a landline. They don't know where this, this icon comes from. <laughs> to put things into context, um, like I said, I'm a millennial. My family first got a computer in October 1998. It was this exact same computer, a translucent iMac, and I would rush home from school. I was so excited every day. I would dial up to the internet, and that was my escape. And I think we just have to remember that 20 years ago, people would use the internet to escape from the real world. And today, people use the real world to escape from the internet. So think about that for a minute. 
And think about what that means for this generation. They literally cannot remember a time before the world's entire history, knowledge, and information was in the palm of their hand at all times. The second uh, common uh, uniting factor of Gen Z is that they're the most diverse generation ever. Um, as of 2013, one out of 10 births in the United States is multiracial, meaning for every 10 kids born, one of those kids have parents that are from two different races. And that's, that's six years ago, it's higher even now. 80% um, of Gen Z identify having one or more friends from a different race, and compare that to below 70% for millennials. And again, sorry, this is from the United States, these stats, it's hard to find uh, data in Sweden about uh, race and ethnicity, but just consider that kids growing up today in Sweden, Gen Z, they can't remember a time before hijabs were common or before Arabic was the second most spoken language. To these kids, the first president that they can remember was black. The third thing is that Gen Z is, of course, socially first, but they're also socially just. They are more politically outspoken than ever before, and 82% of Gen Z use social media to communicate issues that are important to them, such as politics. So what does this mean for marketing and communications? It means that your business or your company must communicate that you align with their values. And that's very important, I'll say it again. You must communicate that your business or your company communicate, uh, aligns with their values. So naturally, the next question is, what are their values? Racial, sexual equality, and diversity. So Gen Z believes that everyone should be included, no matter your skin type, your religion, your body figure, your beliefs, who you choose to date. Um, this is a recent campaign from Nike, for example. It makes no mention of um, you know, the shoes they're selling or the products they're selling. It's just a statement, basically, to Gen Z that they believe in diversity. They're doing a lot of great stuff with Colin Kaepernick in the US, an NFL player. Um, so Nike is one of the brands that totally understands this. And I won't go too much uh, into detail about these campaigns, but they're also champions of gender and sexual orientation equality. 83% agree that transgender people should have the same rights as everyone else. Um, and 75% agree that everyone should have the right to marry whoever they want. These figures are probably much higher in Sweden. As we know, Sweden's a much more progressive society. This picture here on the right is from HBO's most popular show at the moment. It's called Euphoria. It's about a group of teenagers um, and just their everyday life, really. Um, the character on the right is portrayed by Zendaya, 60 million followers on Instagram, a huge star. She's sort of racially ambiguous. You don't know, if, is she white, is she black, is she Asian? Um, and she falls in love with a transgender boy or transgender girl. So, great show, I highly recommend it. Gives you a glimpse into what these kids are growing up like. The second thing is that they believe in doing good for the world because Gen Z goes out of their way to buy from businesses that they think are making a difference. Nearly 80% agree with a statement that businesses should make doing good a central part of their business and not just by giving to charity. 60% say, I will go out of my way to buy products or services from businesses I know are helping to create a better world. Um, Millennia, the millennial statement for this is closer to like 48%. So again, there's differences between Gen Z and millennials. After a recent school shooting in the United States, uh, which unfortunately happens far too often, uh, the Parkland, Florida shooting, Levi's pledged more than one million US dollars to youth activist groups and nonprofits that are working to end gun violence. And that's a very risky move in the United States. That, um, could alienate a lot of customers. Um, but what we saw in 2018 is that Levi's was voted the most authentic brand by Gen Z. How many of you follow National Geographic on Instagram? Anyone? Do you recognize these pictures? This is not National Geographic. This is Patagonia. Patagonia is a California-based brand that's extremely popular with Generation Z. Does anyone know Patagonia? Okay, 
Yeah, I see their logo everywhere on kids around Gothenburg, on the train and the tram. So um, it's definitely becoming a lot more popular over here. If you were to subscribe to their newsletter or follow them on social media or go to their website, you would think they were a nonprofit company when, in fact, they sell T-shirts, sweaters, and jackets, and they did a billion U.S. dollars in revenue last year. The third thing that Gen Z values is authenticity and transparency. And these are buzzwords that get tossed around a lot, especially if you work in social media or digital marketing. You've, I'm sure you hear them on a daily basis. But what does that exactly mean? Because Gen Z has grown up with the internet all around them, they can see through all of the bullshit. They know that perfect uh, sunset on Instagram was Photoshopped. They know that model with the perfect skin was Facetuned. And they know the influencer endorsing that new dress was paid to do that. Social media is like a pendulum. So it's like a swinging pendulum. When millennials like myself first joined MySpace and Facebook in 2006, 2007, we went on there to share raw and filtered moments with friends and family. But with the rise of Instagram, the pendulum started swinging towards showing a perfect lifestyle. I mean, how many of us are guilty, right? How many of us only post the most perfect moments of our life from traveling or from time with family on Instagram? We don't show our everyday struggles. In 2016, if a millennial influencer went to Paris, they'd spend nearly an hour setting up to get the perfect shot. With Generation Z, the pendulum is swinging from perfection back towards authenticity and keeping it real. So in 2019, you might see a post from Emma Chamberlain that has 1.6 million likes standing in front of a gloomy uh, Eiffel Tower, uh, you know, with a crane in the background, looking a little disheveled. Um, just compare the engagement rates on these two photos. Emma Chamberlain, by the way, is an extremely popular YouTuber. I think she has nearly 9 million subscribers, which is massive for YouTube, and she's a self-made millionaire at age 18. This is a uh, popular influencer who's keeping it real. She is a millennial, but uh, she appeals to Gen Z in the sense that she posts Instagram versus reality photos. So on the left, you can see a typical photo she might post. But what she does is go the extra step and show the sort of the behind the scenes. And Gen Z loves this, and she gets, a gr she gets great engagement. Instagram versus reality. And Gen Z loves this sort of transparency. So Instagram-based influencer marketing is expected to be worth 2.3 billion US dollar uh, in just a few months. And that's up from 800 million US dollar in 2017. So some may see this as oversaturation. And as marketers, we need to stay ahead of the curve to remain relevant. We need to think about what's coming next. What we've seen is that um, endorsement budgets over the years have gone from celebrities to influencers to micro-influencers. But as Gen Z is trusting influencers less and less, we need to turn to our customers and to our community to be our brand champions. I keep talking about Instagram, but Instagram engagement rates have been declining for years now. And Gen Z feels more at home on platforms that are authentic, raw, or educational, uh, such as TikTok. TikTok, uh, it's, if for those of you that don't know, um, it's basically a mashup of Snapchat and Vine. You can record 15-second videos with uh, popular songs playing in the background, doing whatever you want. Um, you can be in your bedroom. You can be wherever you are in school. Um, and it's all about just creating fun and quirky videos. If you haven't heard of TikTok, I promise you will. It's the third most downloaded app in the world. It's also the world's most valuable, valuable startup. The last time I checked, it was valued at 75 billion US dollars. To put that into context, Facebook bought Instagram for $1 billion. YouTube is another, uh, amazingly, another amazing platform, and it's extremely popular with all generations, but especially Gen Z. I mean, Gen Z, does, no one watches TV anymore, especially Gen Z. Um, 
and again, it's, you have to keep it authentic and real. What we found is that when we produce videos that are overly edited, scripted, extremely glossy, they barely get any views. But when we just give an influencer a puppy and ask her a couple questions about her style, it gets nearly 200,000 organic views. And this is a lot by YouTube standards. Um, so we're very proud and naked of building up YouTube in the last six months, and 2020 will be the year of YouTube for us. We know that's where Gen Z is spending the majority of their time when it comes to social. Um, we know that on average, the Gen Z customer is watching 23 hours of video a week. That's nearly an entire day. And they're watching 68 videos a day on social media. So what have we learned today? I hope you understand that there is a difference between millennials and Gen Z. I hope you understand that you have to communicate that your brand aligns with their values and that their values are diversity, um, transparency, authenticity, and doing good for the world. And we can make fun of Gen Z for having a short tension span. We can make fun of them for always having Google to cheat on their homework or Wikipedia. But I think we also have to be fair to them. And I think we can all agree that when Gen Z puts their mind to something, they can change the world. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.